I'm uh, blessed to be part of this awesome ministry here, and especially with the school. You have uh, a lot of extra uh, faces, new faces here. Uh, so, some ones we're familiar with, but a lot of the kids here. And, uh, I hope you're ready for an awesome day of worship with, uh, with our school children leading us uh, in worship today. Uh, a couple of quick things, just two things I want to mention before we get going. Uh, I usually have two things before worship. <laughs> Number one, uh, I want to encourage you to think about, I know it's, it's we just got into the month of August, but the end of August, we're having a trunk or treat here. Uh, Mr. Gaines is going to talk about that a little bit more after the end of service, but, but keep that in mind, the last Friday of October. Yes, sir. Did it say August? <laughs> wow. Wow, my brain is still back in summer. Thank you. October. October 25th. See, my birthday's in August. That's why i got to push that. Push for it August. October 25th, the last Friday of October here. Um, and then the second thing is we have a reception for all of you after service today. So please join us. Just head down the stairs. Uh, the commentary or actually I think all, all the goodies are in the fellowship hall. So uh, this is the room with a big glass uh, wall there that's curved. Please head on in there. We would love for you to join us there for, uh, for a time of fellowship afterwards. All right. These guys are lighting up the candles. And we're going to get started for our first song. But I'm going to grab service folder myself. If you need a service folder, let us know. Uh, everything you need or should be on the screens. Uh, but yeah, if you need, you need a service folder, just let us know. Perfect. You normally don't, but that's okay. Our first song, Sing to the King. Crazy.
they'll clap your hands, the fields, the trees, even the rocks, Jesus says, will call out uh, to him when you try to silence them. So yeah, praise the Lord. So praise the Lord today. As we gather today, would you please rise in honor of God's name as we invoke that. And so the invocation is to be called upon God's name. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's cause of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One, one God and the Father of us all. Let us confess our sins to our great God. Gracious Heavenly Father, we confess that we have not thought, spoken, or acted as members of your dear family. We have reflected the harsh ways of this world rather than your loving will. We have failed to confess that your Son in the flesh has opened for us eternal life. Because of Christ's gracious actions on the cross, we believe that
Yeah, I love when uh, students take leadership roles. So it's so, so good to see them stand up here. This is, this is daunting. Whenever, they, they say one of the, the two biggest uh, fears that people have are, are death and public speaking. Right? Because those are the students, right? Uh, public singing has got to be right up there. So thank you guys for your bravery on that. Uh, today we're reading from two different places in Scripture. The first one comes from uh, the book of Galatians. The Apostle Paul, uh, actually he was converted, he, he was originally, he has another story, he was originally opposed to Jesus, and he was trying to fight against all the people that Jesus was uh, calling to him. And, and Paul has, a, has an amazing conversion, and then, and because he was, he was a strong and devout Jewish person. And, and for him, when he comes to his conversion, he recognizes that God's creation is all the same. That, that the people are all loved by God, regardless of where we live, what language we speak, what kind of religion even we claim, God still loves us. And, and so Paul, as he's writing in Galatians, he's writing to a church, the churches of Galatia, it's an area uh, in what we modern day Turkey. And he writes these words. He goes, So in Christ, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes to us from Mark, God, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter. And he took the children in his arms put his hands on them, and bless them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I'd like to invite all of the children to come on up and sing a special song for us. Talk about making us one. All right, so come on up, guys. You guys remember how we were standing on Wednesday? We'll try to, we'll try to replicate that as best as we can, all right? We, we practiced this on, on Wednesday, we practiced a couple songs. Um, if they sing anything like today, like they did on Wednesday, uh, I think you'd be very to
you can sit right down there. So I've got a, a children's message just for you guys. And they're talking about making us one. And when you're singing that, and we said that in, in Christ there's no difference. There's no, there's no separation, right? We're all the same before Jesus died. What are some things that make us not one? That divide us? Oh, yeah, maybe other children want to come down. Maybe they're certainly one. Uh, and what, what are some things that, that, that divide us? What, why, why do we sometimes not feel like uh, like we're big family all the time? What are some things that we do? Or what? Let's, I mean, let's be honest. Let's figure out what other people do, right? I mean, that's what I see. Right? Sin. Sin? Sin? Yeah, you know, sin is, is really the root of everything. Sin is just doing the things that are wrong before God. But what are some, what are some ways in which uh, maybe we would not really want to? How about this? How about if I did this? If you guys kind of divide it a little bit here, and get can scoot, scoot apart just a little bit. Scoot apart. You can scoot apart. You can scoot this way. You can scoot apart. Scoot apart. Go ahead. Okay, so if I, if I drew a line like right here, and all these people over here, I decided I was going to give a cookie to. But not you guys over here, okay? How would that make you feel? Would you guys like that? You guys would like that. You guys are all fine with that. Would you guys like that? No. And what about the next day I decided uh, I was going to take all the people over here, and you're going to go on a special field trip, but you guys can't go. Would that, would that be okay? No, you, you guys are fine with it, right? But you guys aren't. You know, sometimes when that happens, if we treat different people different ways, and when we do that, guess what? That breaks us down. That doesn't make us one anymore. What are the ways in which we can be one? How, how, do, we, how do we fight against that? What are some things that we can do that would prevent us from becoming divided in us versus them kind of stuff? What are, what are some things? If you've ever gone to a place and you felt like, oh, this is cool, I've got a place here. What are some things that you see? Do you see maybe some people who are smiling? Yeah? The people who are smiling seem to be having fun, and you're okay to join with the fun, right? That, that's one thing that we can do. What are some other things that we can welcome? We can welcome people that maybe are strangers or, or new people, especially. I know some of you guys are new to our school this year. How, how, are we, how can we help them join us and be part of our, our group? What are some things we can do? You guys are always raising your hands in chapel for all these things. <laughs> but remember, I don't know, there's all these scary people. Ignore those people, okay? Can we ask someone to play with you? That's great. Yeah, ask, ask a new person to play with you. Get to know everybody in your class. Because sometimes that can be hard. Do you have friends that you like to play with? But can we, can we invite new people into our groups to play with? And, and think about those other things. Um, about when you felt awkward, or, or if you didn't feel comfortable, it was, it was kind of weird going into a situation like, I don't know if I have a place. What are some things that other people have done? They, they maybe took you under their arm and said, hey, let me show you around the building. Because this building can be really confusing when you first come here. There's all these stairs and the puddles, right? Now you just been around for a while, you guys probably have it all figured out. But some people out here are going to get really confused if they start running around the building. Because it is, it's got all these different puddles. I mean, you can help. You can offer to walk alongside people. But I think the biggest thing for me is when, when I think about people that, that sometimes I, I don't get along with, I just have to remember that they're a child of God. Right? That, that God made them, and that they are precious to God, just like I'm precious to God. And, and when I understand that, then it doesn't matter who the other person is, I should show them the love that God has given to me and to all of my friends. Right? And even to people I don't know, that I can show them that love and care that God has given to us. And that's the way God really makes us one in His Son Jesus. All right, would you guys pray with me? Would you guys hold your hands? And you guys can repeat after me, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus, Thank you for sending Jesus, Who the Bible calls our brother, Who the Bible calls our brother, Make us one family, as we live, as we live, and share, and share your love. Your love. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Awesome. Thank you. You can head back to your seats. Thank you for coming around here. Thank you. We're going to have another, you guys are going to come up one more time and sing another song. So thank you for coming up today. Awesome. You guys can head back to your seats.
His impact is still being felt today. And in fact, his words still resonate with us. And I think they're good words to take to heart. And so today, as we're looking at, at the message, uh, we're talking about welcome all children. As we look at, particularly Mark chapter 10, verse 14. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Jesus and children. It's interesting in scripture. I don't ever thought about it, but Jesus seems to attract a lot of people. There's a, there's a, there's a draw to him. Uh, the crowds will gather to him. He feeds 4,000 in one place. He feeds 5,000 in another. And it seems wherever he's going, people crowd and crush around him. And, and there's kind of a mutual attraction there. Because Jesus wants to be by the people too. Occasionally he, he goes off by himself to a quiet place to recharge. But he does, he always goes back into the crowds, goes back into the people. And children are, are no different. I, in, in this story, uh, where the people are bringing children to Jesus to bless them, it's, it's an important story. Actually, I put two gospels, actually three gospels. I meant to change that. Uh, three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all record this event. Mark has it in chapter 10, Luke has it in chapter 18, Matthew has it in chapter 19. Uh, but they all have that same story, where people were coming to, to have Jesus bless them. And, and, and the children are pushed aside. They're pushed back and pushed away. Because Jesus is an important man. He's an important rabbi who shouldn't disturb him. And, and I wonder if, if a lot of people still have some of that same feeling about Jesus. That, that we have an almighty and all-powerful creator, God, is when we really understand how awesome and amazing he is. Then we, we, we look at it and we go, well, why would he care about me? Right? I, I don't want to bother God with my prayers, my petty problems. Uh, and, and yet, Jesus says, no. <laughs> I want to be in your midst. And so Jesus came down to earth in the first place. God sends him into this world to be with the people, to be with you and me. Even after he's been raised from the dead. In fact, he says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among you. We, we started off today in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We started with the name of God, and there's more than two people here. <laughs> so I'm telling you, Jesus is here. He, he's like, I'm going to be in your midst. He is here today with us in spirit. And I hope you want to be near him too. I hope there's this, this mutual attraction. You see, there's a tradition in the, in the ancient world, and particularly among the Jewish people, if there was a, a, a good teacher or a rabbi who came to your community, uh, people would bring their children, oftentimes their little children, to be blessed by this rabbi. And so Jesus, it's not surprising that he's understood and recognized as a good rabbi, that people would want to bring the children to him to have him bless them. Uh, but I can imagine the disciples were trying to protect Jesus and say, no, you can't, don't, don't go. Don't go near him. We have to we have to reserve his energy or his time for, for important people. And unfortunately, that's how oftentimes children feel. We have to shove aside for more important things or more important matters. And I, I hope that uh, as, as I've been here at St. John's and the ministry here with the school and the child care of the church, you see and recognize that we don't push children off to the side. That we want to keep them centered in, 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 in what we're doing. And they can be distracting sometimes. I get it, right? And then that's sort of the, the trade-off. They, they, can, they, can, they can pester you and annoy you. They're, they're making noises in the pews. They're dropping cars on the floor. Whatever. You know, I know. I get it. I have four kids, right? Um, I, I would love to tell you that when they get older, they are less annoying, right? Um, <laughs> Now, I would say they're quieter, but I can't even say that, you know, when they're in the house. Um, our, our youngest two will turn 20 in January, right? So, I mean, they're, they're older college age. It's really hard for me to believe that and, and say that out loud. Um, but they're a lot of fun, but they're all very distracting. They have their needs, their concerns, their worries, and they can certainly, it's certainly easy to just kind of shove them off and say, no, I'm doing more important things right now. But Jesus doesn't do that. What's fascinating is I think if we watch Jesus, is the way he cares for people who are marginalized in society in general, those who are sick, uh, those who are begging on the side of the road, lepers who are cast out from, from 
from general civilization, and even children. You see, children had no real uh, worth in the ancient world. And in, in Roman and Greek tradition, if you did not want your child, uh, you could just abandon the child in the woods, in the forest, whatever. You could just, just leave them. It's like, okay. And no one would bat an eye child. Because you're like, no, I can't do it. Other people would, would oftentimes find those children, take them, and you're like, oh, good, make them with orphans. No, they wouldn't do that. They weren't so kind. They oftentimes use the children as uh, free labor, enslave them, right? Turn them in doing awful or horrible things, teach them how to pickpocket, teach them, or maybe maim them on purpose so that they could bet better. And then there's some horrible and awful things that people would do because children aren't really worth it, at least in the ancient world. And this is maybe why Jesus' attitude towards children is so unique. And, and it, it sort of is, is different. When, when Jesus was 12 years old, he, he finds himself in the temple, and he, he was, uh, went with his, his parents to Jerusalem, the Passover, and he's 12, and Luke tells us this story, that, that Jesus is there in the temple, and everybody around him is amazed at how well he knows his scriptures and how logical, and, because as much as it is that a 12-year-old would be able to do this, I think it's also that they just didn't value children that much. Oh, sure, train them up in the way they will go as they get older, they will not hear from it, right? That's, that's from Proverbs. But for the most part, they didn't have a lot of work. And so Jesus taking time out of his precious schedule and working and teaching with his disciples to spend time with children, I think, speaks volumes. When we think about accepting children, do we accept them the way that Jesus does? And so we're talking about welcoming all children. Do, do we understand how precious children are in the same way that Jesus Number one, he says there's no hindrance. Right? We, we don't want to put any, uh, any barriers between children and Jesus. The disciples were standing in his way, and he basically says, no, let the children come to me. He, he pushes the disciples aside and says, no, we're not going to have any barriers anymore between the children and Jesus. Take a look at what Paul says. He understands the same concept when it comes to the, the people of God. And he says this, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. 2 Corinthians 6, 3. What Paul's saying here is he goes, listen, if, if we have this awesome, amazing thing and this love of God in Christ Jesus, why would we prevent people from getting to it? But that's what we do, don't we? Sometimes we, we, we do that when it comes to the things of church. We say, well, you can't come to church unless you dress the right way or look the right way. Uh, you can't come to church because um, you don't give, right? You're not members of this church, and so we have members only or exclusive in that capacity. Right? You wear the wrong clothes or the wrong hairstyle. People look at you strangely. Yes, you bring loud children sometimes into church, and you'll get some, you'll get some mix, right? Right, Is that a stumbling block? Or do we, do we understand that sometimes the ways in which we like things might put a barrier in front of children? That, that, that they might not understand or be able to access Jesus. It's hard for us to look at ourselves. To look at ourselves through the, through the eyes of children to see what are the things that we're doing that don't let children come and understand who Jesus is. Don't put a stumbling block in anyone's path. Anyone. Not just adults. This is anyone's path. So if we're going to accept children the way Jesus says, we need to remove all barriers. We, we try to remove as much as possible those hindrances. Number two, we want to value them. That, that they are special, they are precious. Uh, our attitudes have changed significantly from, from 2,000 years ago to today for, for children. And I know that your children are precious to you, whether they're your children or your grandchildren or, or, or if you're a guardian or whatever that is. They're very precious to you. They're special to you. I know that because you're taking the extra time today to be here. Right? If your children were valuable, if they, if they didn't really matter, you would have made the extra effort today to come, to, to maybe be a little uncomfortable. Uh, this isn't your normal Sunday morning setting for many of you. Okay, I get it. And for those of you, this is your normal Sunday morning setting, at least for the, the uh, space that we're in. It's not necessarily the normal Sunday setting because we're not using the organ. I'm not in the row where I go up really Everything's called, everyone's a little uncomfortable today. But do we, do we value our children enough 
to, to invest in them with the Word of God. Right? I mean, Jesus comes, and he doesn't just say, hey, let the kids come over here and we're going to play ball. No, he's coming to bless them. He's coming to give them the Word of God. To bring them into that fellowship and to show them that they really are precious and valuable. If anyone causes one of these little ones to sin, or to those who believe in him to stumble, is what Jesus says, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Matthew 18, 6. This just shows you how valuable children are to the Lord. He says that they're very precious. Don't lead them astray. Actually, when I read that passage, I, 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 I'm a little daunted. I'm like, oh my goodness, am I leading little children astray? I hope not. I pray not. I, I, you know, I try to do the best I can not to do that. Uh, but it shows the value that God has placed on children. And if we're going to accept the way that uh, children the way Jesus does, we need to give them our time. Okay. We need to spend time with them. That's probably the, the biggest thing that I know and, and, uh, as I've gotten older and my kids have gotten bigger that I wish I spent more time with them when they were younger. Right? In the moment, sure, you're busy, you're good. And, and I try to spend as much time with them as I could, uh, but there's always going to be a wistfulness, I think, uh, as, as parents, as we grow, as the children age, we're like, ah, man, I wish I would have done these things, right? I would have spent more time with them and done that. Jesus says, you know, if they're valuable, if you're not putting a hindrance to them, then, then let them come. I, I want to spend time with them. They want to spend time with me, Jesus says. Let's do that. Here in uh, Jesus called the little children, Luke 18. He, Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me. I want to spend time with them. Your time is probably one of the most precious commodities that you have. I know you, you think about your bank account and other things like that, but your time, think about it. it it's limited. I know that. And where you spend your time, I'll tell you, is what you value. Right? I mean, think about where you spend your time. That's what you value. Do you spend your time valuing your children with your children? If you do, focusing on them, thinking about them, providing for them, and I know you do, that, that shows that they're valuable, that they're precious. But not only does this story tell us about how Jesus accepted children and how we can model our lives about it, we need to accept Jesus the way children do. And that, that flips it around a little bit. We're like, okay, I can do better in accepting children because Jesus was an adult, I'm an adult. But now Jesus spins it on his head, on the head, and he says, you know what, will you accept me like a little child? There's no, without any hindrance. What, what I love about working with children is just their honest reactions, right? There's, there's no guile, right? There's, there's no pretense. There's no sarcasm. Uh, oh, um, okay, when you get fourth grade, maybe, but... <clears throat> or fifth grade, well, that's not so much. But, but with, the, with the little children, they just, the, the joy is pure. Their sorrow is pure. They just, you, know, you, you know exactly what they're feeling because um, they just let it show. They wear their heart on their sleeve. There's, there's no hindrance in accepting Jesus either. When you tell them that Jesus loves you and that he lives in their heart, they're like, yeah, Jesus loves me. He's my heart. I mean, it's, just, it's a solid truth for them. And, and Jesus tells us that, that this is the model of our faith. Look what he says here. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter. This is in Mark 10, verse 15. Do we accept Jesus like children? Which is the, the, the plain truth that Jesus is who he says he is. That he is our brother. And you read in, in, in Hebrews talking about how Jesus has become our brother. He's, he's perfectly, completely human. God becomes human for you and me so that we could, we could relate to Jesus. He's been tempted in every way like we have. And he did not sin. He, he suffered and he's, he, he knows what pain is like. And we, we have this amazing son of God, high priest, who makes intercession for us before the heavenly father who understands us. Do we believe that? Do we, do we understand that like a little child? Well, man, Jesus is just, just like me. He knows me. He's a friend and a brother of mine. 
We have to receive the kingdom of God like little children. Those wide eyes of excitement and awe. It's amazing that our God cares for us. Yes. It's even more amazing that He cares so much for us. He sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins. And in his human-to-human -human substitute, right? He had to be flesh and blood to put his, himself in my place. Put himself in your place to die for your sins. Do you believe that? Do you believe that honestly without just saying, well, blah. As soon, as soon as you start putting in those, those caveats, right? But that's adult thinking, not child. And that's what we're called to receive Jesus. Like. Without any hindrance, without any of that barriers that you might want to put out. Do we value it? We talk about how what we spend our time on is what will show what we value. Do, do we value Jesus enough to give him our time? Do we need to give our children time? Yes, absolutely. But are you giving Jesus some time? I mean, any time in your week. Are you, are you praying to him? Are you reading the word of God? I mean, do we really value what we have in this precious gift? Paul says this in Philippians 3, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may be in Christ. So Paul is writing about here, he's writing about his past. He's so proud of who he was. And as, as a Jewish leader, he was of a, of a tribe or a group called the Pharisees. They held up, upheld all the laws. And he was so proud of himself because he was doing all the right things for God. And he says, he says I consider all of that garbage. That's nothing compared to knowing Jesus. He said, his value on Jesus was so great that everything else was not worth it. Thing. In fact, we're going to sing a song at the end of the service today. We talk about being so blessed. Right? I've got a heartbeat in my chest, and, and I don't care about the rest. Right? Like, I'm just giving it to because I'm blessed. Right? And, and, and if I have Jesus, that's the first and foremost important thing in my life. And everything else is garbage. Yes, we have hardships. Yes, we have difficulties. Yes, we have. Um, Oh my goodness, I'm sure we could all uh, start making a list of all of the, the problems that we have in life. Alright? Let's put first on the top of the list that I'm blessed. That I'm blessed by God that I am part of the family of God. And that is awesome. That is a greater God than anything else. Peter and John were once walking, and we hear this story in the book of Acts. And a, and a beggar comes to them and says, hey, do you guys have any gold or silver? And they say to them, they say, no, we don't have any gold or silver, but we'll give you what we can, but we'll give you the name of Jesus Christ. And this man couldn't walk. He said, get up and walk. And he stood up and he's like, how much more valuable was knowing Jesus in that healing than gold or silver? Gold or silver would have gotten him through one more day. But knowing Jesus got him through the rest of his life. And, and that's how precious that relationship with God is to be valuable, to spend time with you. And, and if not, you know, it's okay. It's okay to admit that. Because we have a God of grace and love. We confessed our sins earlier. Uh, we can confess them again. <laughs> we can confess them again and again. And God says, please come to me. I want to spend time with you. By confessing your sins, guess what? You're spending time with him and you're valuing him. And when you receive that forgiveness, say, okay, I'm going to try and do better tomorrow. I'm going to try and do better today. Give him your time. Jesus says this, If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. I pray that as we continue to go forward in, in ministry together here in partnership with the school, with the child care, with the church here, that you understand that all of that, what we do, is we're trying to stay connected to Jesus. We're trying to connect you to Jesus. Our, our theme this year is talking about enduring, right? So you drive by and you see an endure sign uh, every week this year. So we're, we're talking about what it means to have endurance and to persevere. And the biggest thing is, is knowing that we are connected to Jesus and he's the one that gives us life. He's the one that gives us hope. And I pray that if, if, if you understand who Jesus is, that you will walk deeper in that relationship. But if you don't know, if you're, if you're kind of skeptical and you're not quite sure, I'm going to tell you, uh, let's talk. Come, come talk and I'd love to hear uh, what, what your story is. What, where's your hindrance? What's, what's the barrier? What's the stuff?
stumbling block for you coming and just understanding it and letting God's love wash over you. Because usually the relationship with God, where it breaks down is on our end, not on His. His love comes to us every single day. And if you have not experienced that, I want you to. Because it's so awesome. It's so great to know that as many times as I've messed up, as a parent, uh, as, as, a, as a brother, as a sibling, as, as a child, I, I, I've messed up so many different ways, and, and that was just yesterday, right? <clears throat> and here in, in Christ we're forgiven, we need to walk free, and that's the one that makes us one. That we're all the same before the Lord because we've all sinned, but we're all the same in Christ because we've been forgiven. Pray that you be part of that group and that family. One last Bible passage I want you to think about. John writes this in 1 John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. So children of God. I'm so glad to be part of your family. I'm so part of that family of Christ. So brothers and sisters in Jesus, Think that God has made us one. And if you don't feel like you're part of that family, again, yeah, please talk to you because God wants you. He does want you in His family, in His love, because you are valuable to Him. He wants to spend time with you. In fact, He wants to spend the rest of the time, all eternity, with you in heaven. And I pray that that hope of eternal life, that because Jesus has been raised from the dead, so too we will be raised from the dead, that we have that hope. And we'll be able to make us one now and forever. Amen. Now to the peace which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. As you are able, would you please rise now? And we're going to make ourselves one as we confess, and we say together these words of faith. We believe this Apostles' Creed is written a long time ago as kind of a compilation of what all the apostles taught. And so here we, we present this uh, as our confession to one another, binding our hearts and minds together. Let's confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary.
Jesus is indeed the Lord of all, and that most valuable thing, we're going to take him up on his offer that if we come before him in prayer, he will hear us. Would you please rise? As you are able, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your family. And Lord, there are so many barriers that, that want to separate us in this world, and we ask that you would make us one. Continue to pour into our hearts that understanding that every human being here on earth is your precious creation. And, and that value alone should inspire us to share the good news that we have of your Son. For you want to spend eternity with as many people as possible. Shower your love upon us. Continue to draw us closer to you. For we have heard from Scripture, if we draw near to you, Lord, you will draw near to us. And we ask that you would draw near to us this week and, and uh, this month, this year, Lord, draw near to us for our lives. Uh, we ask this in your precious, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we give you thanks and praise that you have granted a new life. Henry Martin Schnacki, born just a couple weeks ago in Okinawa. Bless the parents, Ryan and Emily, and, and proud grandparents, Rick and Debbie, Lord. Uh, we thank you for this precious gift and ask that as you continue to shower them with your love, that, that uh, little Henry would be brought to the, into that family again. That he would become a brother of ours through Jesus Christ in the waters of baptism. May he continue to grow strong in years and lead a life that is pleasing to you. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the students and families of our St. John's School. And we ask that you continue to bless them throughout this year. Bless the teachers and the staff as we continue to work together to understand that we would put no hindrance between any child and, and your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, that we would value them, understand how precious they are to you. Lord, and spend our time investing in them, that they too might come to that, that great understanding and knowledge of your Son and, and to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, during this uh, Pastor Appreciation Month of October, we give you thanks and praise for all pastors and faithful church leaders. It can certainly be a challenge at times leading people in, in, in circumstances where, again, sometimes where we, we want to break down, we want to we want to cause divisions instead of unity. Continue to shower upon the leaders of your church, your love, your grace, that they would be understanding that they are servants of all, and, and that you, Lord, especially servants of you, lead and guide and direct them with your Holy Spirit, that they may live lives that are pleasing to you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, all these things and even more we put into your hands. We trust in your mercy. For we've seen it in your son Jesus. In his love for even little children, his compassion for them, he shows upon us, even as he has taught us this prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And I want to invite all the children up to one more song. You guys can come on all the way up. And I'm also going to invite Mr. John Gay, our principal. Yeah, it's just so amazing that doing that is because they care so much for your kids and the education that they're getting and the faith life that they are developing. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to the staff and all the hard work and the care that they are showing to <laughs> One, uh, a couple of big uh, things to mention right now. One, this you know morning takes a lot of work. All the staff put in a lot of work to make this happen. You guys took time out of your days, but Mrs. Levine and Mrs. Wolf were the ones in charge of this event, and I just want to give a big shout out to them because it has turned out great. <laughs> uh, 
in the upcoming weeks here, there's a couple of important dates. First of all, end of first quarter is already on the 18th. So that's like two weeks away, uh, which is kind of crazy that we're already at that point in the school year. But then, uh, I know students will be very excited about this, we have school off the following Monday on the 21st. So that'll be fun for them and a good hard-earned break there. Uh, and then that Friday, the, uh, not August, October 25th, uh, is our trunk or treat. And Mrs. Swanson and Mrs. Crossman have been working very hard with putting on that event and getting that ready. So uh, there is a sign up that went out in Tiger Tracks this past week. Uh, we just want to make sure that we are you know, using enough space for all the trunks that are going to be there, having enough helpers, and just making sure it's the best event that we can provide for you guys. So if you can make sure to sign up on there, just so that we have an idea of numbers, that would be really, really appreciated. And all are welcome, and uh, we just really hope to see so many people there like we did last year. All right, I think that's it. All right.